Hello, viewers. Good evening and welcome once again to Majestic Christian Television Network. My name is Apostle Larry and uh, I'm here to share with you the Word of God. And before we proceed any further, I want us to share a word of prayer, shall we? Father in heaven, we thank you for this hour. We are asking that you will minister life and power through my lips. I dip my spirit, my soul, and my body in the blood of Jesus. And I'm asking that you give me all trans to communicate what you have for us today. I thank you for whoever is watching now and whoever will be watching later that your word and, and your spirit will touch and make them whole. I thank you for this privilege to be a career and a messenger of your word. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, um, my topic, in fact, my theme for the month has been has been uh, dominion through prayer. Dominion through prayer. And so, um, I want to just conclude my theme for this month. Because I dedicated this month to, uh, to this theme. Because the Lord made me see that the dominion which He gave unto us from the beginning had not been withdrawn. And that dominion is to exercise power and control over the earth and over all the things that are on the earth. Hallelujah. Are you with me, somebody? And so, just to quickly touch on that, I want to read Genesis chapter 1, the verse 20, 20, um, 6. And then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let him have rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over the livestock and over all the earth and over all creatures that move along the ground. So, God's intention was for man to have absolute dominion over the earth and all its contents. And you might wonder, what did that, what, what did that really mean? Did God just say that to, 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 to just to make a statement? Or he meant to give us a certain authority or influence which we are supposed to exercise in the realm of the earth? I want to, I want to suggest to you, and I want to say emphatically, that God's intention was to have was for, for, for us to have dominion and to have absolute influence. In other words, was to make sure that everything was in line and under our authority. Now, as 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 you know, down the down the line, uh, Adam sinned against God, Adam and Eve, and they lost the influence they had over the earth. And that's how come the devil became the prince of this world. All right, he became the the one who was ruling and controlling the earth. And that's how come he really uh, ravaged the earth and ravaged people's lives terribly by affecting people with only wrongdoings. But Jesus came along and the purpose of Jesus was to correct and to restore unto us the dominion which we lost when Adam uh, disobeyed God. And if you look at the life of Jesus closely, the Bible says he was born of a woman. Which means that he had flesh and blood like you and I. When you remember when he died and resurrected, he had reappeared and the disciples saw him and they, were, they didn't believe. He said, look, I'm flesh and blood. You can touch me and you give me something to eat. And he proved to them that he was flesh and blood. So I want you to realize that Jesus came into the earth and walked and operated as flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. Now, the point is this. That as flesh and blood, we can operate in this dominion. And this mandate which God has given to us. Now, the reason why it is important is this. Without that, without exercising the dominion which God has given to us, certain things may go out of line and we may find ourselves rather coming under subjection. And this is the whole point. You see, when Jesus came, he demonstrated amply that a man that's flesh and blood can have authority and dominion over the earth and over all the contents of the earth and over everything that is happening in the earth and it's so very important that you and i become encouraged by that praise the lord you know remember there's a story in luke chapter 9 where a certain man brought his son who was epileptic 
The disciples could not heal that son. And so, um, eventually, the father of the boy reverted to Jesus and asked Jesus, uh, please help me. And Jesus was so, uh, you know, embarrassed that the disciples could not cast the devil out. And so, after Jesus had cast the devil out, they asked him in private, Why, Lord, could we not cast the devil out? And Jesus told them, It was because you had little faith. And he said, This kind goeth not out except by prayer and by fasting. Now, I want to suggest to you that if you want to work in your dominion authority, dominion mandate, which God gave you and me from the very beginning, you need to be a person of prayer. Prayer has to be in your life. That way, you'll be able to bring things under subjection. You'll be able to control the earth and the things that and the circumstances around your life. Very, very important. So, I need you to realize that it was not only meant for Jesus to, to operate in this uh, mandate. And that is why the Bible says in Mark chapter 16 that uh, uh, whoever believes in Christ will have the ability to operate in that, that, that uh, dimension of, of, of dominion power, dominion authority. Now, why am I stressing this? Because sometimes we take things for granted. And we believe that, okay, life comes and goes and, you know, take things the way it, it comes and you don't have to worry about anything and just do what you can. But that is not God's intention. If God says... Have dominion and rule. A ruler is somebody who exerts power, who exerts influence. You, you, you show that you are in charge. And so God knows. God has known all along that things were going to go out of line. And that he expects us to exercise dominion mandate, the dominion authority he has given unto us. So that we can cause things to line up properly. And that was why Jesus Make sure that whenever he encountered a situation which was abnormal, he would exercise that dominion power and he would put it right. And I want to put it to you that you and I are required by God to operate in that dominion influence, the dominion mandate, because God has made it possible for you and I. Say, I hear you. Say, I hear you. Say, I hear you. Now, a very a certain story really uh, strikes my mind, and uh, let me just take you there. In Matthew chapter 14, the Bible tells us, Matthew chapter 14, the verse 22, the Bible says that uh, immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on, on ahead of him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd, verse 23, after he had dismissed them, he went uh, up to a mountainside by himself to pray. Now, look at what he did. He went up to a mountainside to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. That means Jesus was apart. His disciples had gone ahead of him. Now, the Bible says in verse 25, During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the water, when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. Of course, who wouldn't be terrified you see a man walking on water? This is something not, not natural. It is supernatural. Hallelujah. And so they were shocked because they had never seen something like that before. It's a ghost, they cried. And they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Now, that is not the, the, the part I want to focus on. Now, verse 28. The Lord... Uh, uh, Peter replied, Lord, if it is you, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. I'm going to stop there. Now, it is not normal for us to walk on water. But Jesus, Jesus told Peter, come. He didn't say, I'm going to pray. I'm going to do something so that you also can have the power to walk on water. No. All he said was come. And, and, uh, and Peter just honored that uh, command. Or that invitation. And Peter began to walk on water. Look at what happened further. He says. Immediately. Uh, uh, no. no further, let me just go back a little bit. Um, so, 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 so. Then Peter got out of the boat. And walked on the water. And came toward Jesus. Now the next verse. Verse 30. But when he saw the wind. He was afraid and began to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. 
he got distracted why because the waves and the wind look terrifying destruction in life from god can cause us to sin anybody who is focused on god you will have dominion you'll be able to operate in this dominion power you know it's very discouraging that many times we get defeated and we fail at certain things because we doesn't work the way it, uh, we expect it to work but god has spoken the word and that word hasn't changed is that is why some people who stay focused on god are able to operate in this dominion power you know it is it is it is not a complicated matter i believe it is a basic a basic uh, uh provision which god has made for all of us who are who are his creation especially every man and woman but those who have focused on him those who are connected with him those who work with him those who pray those who seek him they have the ability to operate in this dominion mandate why the spirit of god in us will work it out praise the lord look there's a story in um first chronicles chapter four it's a very popular story people like to read and uh, talk about about a man called jabez jabez and you know we read it because we say oh jabez was born in pain and then he prayed to god and god um corrected his problem and god changed the situation but look at look at what happened here the bible says in verse 9 of first chronicles chapter chapter 4 jabez was more honorable than his brothers his mother named him jabez saying i gave birth to him in pain ha huh. Jabez cried out to God, the God of Israel. So that which means Jabez turned to God, Jabez focused on God, and Jabez prayed to God, and Jabez let God know his frustrations in life. Oh, that you will bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. The Bible says, and God granted his request. What a story. In two verses what a change a complete change of life of a man listen to me I don't know what may have brought a limitation to your life but you know what you and I possess the ability to correct anything which has gone wrong in our lives we have the mandate from God already if you choose not to do it you have chosen not to but you have what it takes to correct anything that has gone wrong in your life and in my life praise the Lord the Bible says the young man was born by his mother in pain. So the mother decided to, to memorialize and to, and to remember what she went through. And so she put a tag on, on, on the boy and called him Jabez. Because he said, because you were born in my time of pain, so this shall be your name. That became the label and Jabez went through a lot. Jabez went through a lot. The mother, of course, couldn't do anything about it. She felt she had given her son a name. But it became a limitation. It became a problem. It became a, 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 a constant source of trouble for the boy. And the boy grappled with all kinds of situations. And every time there was pain in his life, what did he do? He decided to resort to God who made him. He said, God, I cannot continue this way. My life has been too miserable. I'm supposed to be a better person than I am. But what I see is heartbreaking. What I go through is, is painful. And I can no more endure it. So God, please help me. And when he turned to God, the Bible says that God heard his petition. And, the, and God answered his request. He had dominion over his situation. He had control. He changed it. Hallelujah. God expects us to have dominion over weaknesses, over, over circumstances which are not favorable. Things which deny us of, of the rights and the privileges we are supposed to have. God's intention is for us to exercise that dominion. Are you hearing me? Unless you and I get up and say, hey. By the way, if God says in Genesis chapter uh, 1 verse 26, it says have dominion. It says subdue. That means Certain things are going to rise up in rebellion to the authority you're supposed to have over them. But you and I have a duty to subdue them, to bring them under our power. Hallelujah. 
if your natural power is not able to do it then use your supernatural power if your your human wisdom is unable to comprehend it then use supernatural wisdom ask God to give you understanding and revelation of whatever the situation is and you will be amazed how you can change your situation say I hear you oh I'm telling you it's so very important that we step into this role God has already defined for us he defined it from the very beginning and God had not has not withdrawn that mandate he said as long as the earth remains seed time and harvest for thousands and thousands if not millions of years that same principle is working so why would God withdraw the dominion mandate he gave to you and I he has not and he will not praise the Lord I said praise the Lord so now I'm trying to get you back to that place God originally had for you hallelujah you know i'm going to close with another interesting example you know i have sh i've shared um, and spoken on this thing for the whole month and if you want to uh you know go back and you want to listen to some of the things i have shared on this topic to inspire you you can go to our website majesty christian television network uh, majestytv.org and uh, click on the video button and you will see a couple of youtube videos videos which um, I preach and uh, you will be able to follow some of uh, the, the, the what I shared in those uh, messages but let me close with uh, this other interesting illustration now I need to know where you are not able to exercise your natural dominion you can exercise a supernatural one praise the Lord now I'm taking this one for sec from 2nd Kings 2nd Kings chapter 6 very quickly 2nd Kings chapter 6 we see a man who was a prophet by calling Elisha was a prophet by calling you are maybe uh, a teacher by calling you are uh, you are uh, a doctor by calling you are a janitor by calling but that is just the job God gave you to do but that does not deduct or detract from the original mandate God gave you when you were born say I hear you now the Bible says in 2nd Kings chapter 6 that a company of the prophets said to Elisha look the place where we meet with you is too small for us let us go to the Jordan where each of us can get a pole and let us build a place for us there to live and he said go then one of them said, Would you please come with your servant? I will, Elisha said. And he went with them. They went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Oh, my Lord, he cried out. It was borrowed. Wow it was borrowed that which he got he borrowed that which he took from somebody to use had had flown from his hand maybe you borrow money for a business and suddenly it flew out of your hand you 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 you, you entered into as a business or an a, a venture to improve your life but all of a sudden you've lost control of it how do you do you you know is you have to now exercise the dominion mandate which God gave to you. It's a pity I don't have time to go further, but let me just sum it up by saying that axe head which fell in the water. Now remember, it was iron, made of iron. There is no way iron can can stay on the surface of water. It will always go down. The force of gravity will always pull it down. The certain things when you lose control of them, it goes down. Your life when you lose control of it, it goes down. But listen to me by dominion power and by dominion mandate you can reverse the decline you can reverse the losses in jesus name you can correct whatsoever has gone wrong in your life what did elijah do very quickly before i close the bible says that um the man of god asks where did he fall when he showed him the place elijah cut a stick and threw it there and made the iron float lift it out he said and the man reached out his hand and took it 
you can correct things which have gone wrong by dominion power in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you now before I sign off. I want you to know that whatsoever has lost, um, has, has flown out of your hands, you've lost control over, you are able to get it back. In Jesus' name. If you can't do that naturally, supernaturally you can do so. Lift up your hands, let's pray. Father, I want to thank you that this message has come to somebody who needs divine and a supernatural intervention. Whatever they have lost control of, I invoke now into action the dominion power, the dominion grace that you have already placed upon them. I am opening their eyes now and I'm asking that when they open their mouth to declare something concerning their situation, concerning their need, it shall be done. I give you praise this hour and I give you glory that this prayer has been granted. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, 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 time flies, so also soon I'm done. Uh, but if you need to contact me, uh, the numbers are on the screen. You can give us a call at Majesty Christian Television, and we'll be glad to make contact with you, to pray with you, or to counsel you, or whatsoever. If you want to fellowship with us also, uh, call us, and we will, uh, in, we, will, we will get you over to be a part of our fellowship and our ministry. Now, before I go, let me just say one word. Uh, if you have been enjoying our broadcast, we want to ask you to please help us because last week some people broke into the studio and they made away with our, our, some of our broadcasting equipment. And so right now we are really in need of help to uh, buy the equipment back and also to secure this place better. Uh, we are in an office complex, but somehow some, you know, some people broke in. We believe that it's a conspiracy. Maybe the enemy used them to, 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 to cause this damage. But we need you now to partner with us to help us to buy back those things which have been stolen. So please, uh, give us a call on the studio line and we'll be glad to take your gift to help us uh, restore that which has been uh, taken away. The Lord bless you richly and I look forward to being with you next time. Bye-bye. On the Lord, have your way.